Hello guys, welcome to another video. Today I will be showing you I will be showing you how to improve your latency in game and your overall ping situation. Dela, are you an expert in network? Uh, no, I have Google. Before we start with the network things, I want to show you something that I forgot to show in my optimization video. This one. Okay. So let's do that before anything else and then we move to the network fixes. Let's go. One thing that you gotta do is you gotta click on start and write down edit power plan. You can see it because my webcam is there, but edit power plan. Okay. You click and you open these settings right here, guys. All right. You have the screen. Don't worry about this, but you have to click on change advanced power settings. By default, you should be in balanced. All right. But if you have a gaming machine, it's very, very, very important that you switch to ultimate performance. Otherwise, your Windows, you are playing and it's like, oh, it's drawing too much power. Let's save the planet and boom, your frames are dropping. It doesn't properly work like that, but you know what I mean, right? So you switch from balance to no like performance, not power saver, but we go ultimate performance. And in this case, it's active because I have decent computer. We go processor power management, which is very important if you're playing like video games very heavy on the CPU, like, you know, and showdown. Uh, Battlefield 5, for example, those those games are heavy on the CPU and RAM speed, which is another thing that I want to discuss later, by the way. So we collapse this and it should be 100%. So if it's not 100%, put it 100%. Then we have system cooling policy. You can leave it active. It's fine. No problem. But what's important is this one. Maximum processor state. 99, not 100%, 99%. Dela, why 99%? Just do it and don't ask questions. You don't know. Even if I answer to you, you're gonna, you know, we're going to end up making diagrams with straws and metal wires and discussing metaphysics. So just press OK and, and you should just press apply and then OK. And we are done for the most important thing. If you have a gaming PC and you don't have maximum performance as a power plan, you're losing performance. But it's important that you tell your computer, give me all the power that I need. This step is also very, very important. I've been discussing RAM for a long, long time on my stream, and uh, a lot of people are surprised at what kind of difference the RAM speed can make, and I can tell you this for sure. Dela, does the RAM speed make a lot of difference for gaming? Hell yeah, yes. If you have a good CPU, a good GPU, and crap RAM, you're losing a lot of performance. Dela, how is this possible? Because... Modern gaming requires modern solution. No, because modern gaming uh, requires you to have at least uh, the RAM in the sweet spots dictated by the, the, the game producer. So if you want to get the top performance for your game, you need to stick to those RAM speeds. For example, if you play on showdown with a RAM that is less than 3200, you're, you're getting a stupid performance because the RAM is too slow to play those modern games, right? So the sweet spot for gaming in general, I would say is 3200 megahertz to 3600. Do I need more Dela? That's a difficult topic. Do you play in 4K? Yes, you need faster RAM. Uh, the sweet spot for 4K gaming is 4000. Insane. And RAM that fast is also quite expensive still. Not as expensive as a couple of years ago, but it's still quite pricey. So think about it. So if you're planning to play 4K games, 4K resolution, you need at least 3.6 4000 is optimal but anything less you're losing performance Dela how do I know if my RAM is underperforming I'll show you immediately let's go you need to download this program called CPU Z the link will be in the description you let the program open you you let him tell you there is a new version do you want it no stop checking for updates and you are in the program now you open the program you see something like this in this case I have a 10900k blah 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 it's gonna tell you which CPU you have and the frequency of your CPU. So we navigate the different sections. We have cache, main board, it's gonna tell you all the information about your main board, blah, blah, blah. And then memory, that's what's important. So in this case, we have uh, DRAM frequency. That's what we need. I overclock my RAM to 3.8. Uh, why? Because yes, more is better. So the class latencies are not optimal for gaming. They're actually 19, you know, there's, there's another big topic that, that, that I can make about RAM class latency, but it's not important. At least it's not important now. What's important is this number. The number here needs to be doubled. In this case, 1,900 per two. 
3008 okay if you have for example a thousand and fifty and your rams are rolling because you have to double it 2100 your ram is garbage for 2021 you need better ram your ram is too slow so you need to upgrade you cannot use a 3080 rtx a 3090 with ram this slow yeah, but i have 64 gigabytes or it doesn't matter the gigabytes the speed matters for gaming so even if you have 128 no it's too slow you cannot game on modern games with that kind of ram so you need to upgrade Dela, how do i know if i can upgrade from my motherboard it's easy you go here main board you write down what kind of motherboard you have in this case gigabyte technology blah 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 z490 vision g that's my motherboard it's a pretty good one actually for the price and then you can google it and you can see what kind of memory your, your motherboard can hold in this case mine can hold a 5000 frequency rams which are insanely expensive and not for gaming because those rams the more frequencies you have the, the higher class latency the board but again the diagram with the straws and the metal so it doesn't matter but that's how you can check if you can upgrade your ram in the motherboard because some motherboards are locked if you have a limit of 2100 which happens all the time with pre-built computers which are magically cheap right they are cheap for one reason guys you're getting shit ram on a shit motherboard most of the time make sure you check before you buy a new ram and that's how you check your ram speed another very common mistake for people when they upgrade their rams is yeah but i bought a 3600 memory my, my ram speed is still down this ram is broken no it's not broken there is something that you have to do and again this is very important so follow along let's go cpu z so once again we are in the memory screen and we have again the speed of the ram if it's low you can cry in a corner it's fine but we have to go to the main board section why because we need the name of our motherboard for the next step the next step is about xmp profile what does xmp do it tells your ram to go to the fastest speed certified by the seller Della, why do i have to do this because in 2021 to build a gaming computer you need a degree apparently so they, they made everything so complicated that everybody needs to study hours a day to, to figure out all of the stuff on, on their own so yeah funny right so even if you buy high speed rams and you install them without enabling xmp profile you are in trouble okay because your RAM is not performing like the certified speed that the seller advertised. Because yes, the stick can go to 3600, right? Like you bought the RAM with that speed, but you didn't enable that speed. So you have a default RAM stick sitting very sad in your motherboard, looking all cool with the RGB and all of those stuff, but it's not working properly. So why do we need CPU Z? Because you need to check your motherboard and you need to check how to enable the XMP profile for your motherboard. We do a, a fast research. For example, we can go on YouTube, you know YouTube, go on YouTube and we go like uh, uh, Gigabyte Vision G Z490, which is my motherboard. And then right after you wrote XMP1. See, we have we have like tutorials how to enable XMP profile on a motherboard, gigabyte, blah blah blah. And this is very important because every motherboard has a different menu to enable XMP. That's why I'm not showing you how to enable it. Because in my BIOS will look completely different than yours. So what you gotta do, you write, for example, look, let's try another motherboard. Aorus Z490, which is like, you know, for example, Elite AC, how to enable XMP. And I promise you, there's gonna be like somebody explaining to you how to enable it. See, there's this guy. All you have to find is how to enable XMP. For example, that's how an EVGA um, motherboard BIOS looks like. In this case, it's probably in the memory section. You scroll down and you have to look for the XMP profile. So what's important to remember is that every motherboard is different. So I cannot show you how to enable in my motherboard recording the BIOS. First of all, it's a pain in the ass and I'm lazy. So second, it's going to be different in your motherboard. If you don't have a gigabyte, if you have an MSI motherboard, it's going to be in another place. So quick Google research, enable XMP, do not touch anything else, save and go out. Then you go back to CPU Z and you will see your RAM is going to the fastest speed advertised by the seller. That's very important, guys. You bought a new RAM, you bought a computer, you never enable XMP, your performance is under your shoes, I promise you. In modern gaming with higher resolutions, you cannot play 4K games with good performance with 2100 RAM.
So said this about the RAM, which is the most important thing that you need to know about RAMs in 2021, we can move to the actual network optimization. Let's get started. Please follow along. If you don't manage to follow properly, just pause the video. There's, there's like a button down there on the left. You can pause, make it slower, watch it in another moment. But I suggest you do all of these things together. Let's get started. You need to download this program that I will be putting in the description. Maybe, if I feel nice. It's called TCPO Optimizer. All right, you need to run the program as an administrator. And that's the program. It's loading everything right now. You need to wait. You know, kill is done doing whatever he's doing. And then we start with some basic settings. Very easy, guys. Very slow. You put the slide all the way to 100 plus megabytes. So the next step will be going to MTU latency. And you need to select a, a, a domain like this is speedguys.net. So just go on the top and just go speedguy.net, blah, blah, blah. Pings per URL, three and packet size, 32. I don't want any joke in my comment section. Okay, then we go here and we go in largest MTU and we click on it. Place at max MTU to 1500, blah, 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 blah. Yes, you press OK. Oh, yes, in this case. And you let it do its thing. All right, you need to do a, a little bit of testing. Like, for example, you can set your MTU to 1492 uh, with a maximum of 1005. If you don't know what you're looking at, don't worry. This is the number you have to remember, you know. 1492, 1492. Do another test just to make sure. Yes, you can do another test. I already know that it's stable. I already use it, but I suggest you do at least three. Moving on. And again, guys, this is very important. So take your time, do it properly. Now, after we have this number 1492, copy it. You remember it. In this case, I'm copying it because I'm stupid. We go in general settings and we enable custom. Okay, we need to click on custom. And you write in MTU the number that you got from the testing. Okay, you just copy paste. In this case, I already told you for me it's 1492, which is fine. Then for the next settings, it's pretty easy. Just copy whatever it is. normal, window scaling, disable, cubic, received size scaling, blah, 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 blah. Enable, enable, disable, enable. Don't write anything here. Disable, enable, disable, disable, disable. All right. Then advanced settings. Next tab. Let's go. And we have more sections. Don't be overwhelmed. You don't have to touch a lot of stuff. It's fine. Just follow along. Once again, like I showed you before, just copy my settings. Just leave it blank. 10, 10, 4, 5, 6, 7, 4, disable, 2,300. Just copy everything else. Type quality of service, default, default NA, uh, network throttling index, gaming zero. Scroll down here, you choose gaming and then disable, default, disable, enable, optimize three. Okay. Max user port 65534. That's fine. And then time the wait delay 30. All right. Just copy my settings. You'll be fine. If you're not sure, go back, rewatch the video and follow along. So when you're done copying the settings from general, I'm going to show you again, general and advanced. Do not touch BDP, okay? Just, just touch general settings, copy and advanced, all right? Click apply changes. It's gonna show you all the changes that it's doing to the register. You just press okay. And it's gonna do its thing. I don't know, depending on which computer you have, which components is gonna take longer or shorter. You might be playing from a Samsung smart fridge. Some registry changes may require reboot to take effect. Would you like to reboot now? No no and you can close all right so for the next step we need to go in the network status section so you go all the way down start network status and you press enter it's gonna look like this uh you may have different colors if you activated your windows but i hate you know i hate windows i'm not gonna activate it i'm sorry deal with it then you go to change adapter options and you have ethernet 2 whatever and you click on properties right here right click then properties as an administrator. What you gotta look for is internet protocol version 4, TCP, EPV4, uh, and everything else. Click on properties, and that's what you have. I have the option, you know, obtain IP address automatically, blah, 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 blah. Doesn't matter, but what's important is this. Usually by default is obtain DNS server address automatically. No, okay, no, we want a custom one. So use the following DNS address. One 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 zero zero one, and you press OK. 
What the DNS server will do is just give you a little bit less latency. You can use Google DNS, you can use the default of your network, but usually this one is the best. So just try it, do some testing and see if it works properly for you. I think it's gonna work better. Of course, it's gonna work better. That's why I made this video. The next step will be quite easy. We just have to go to a website and test if our connection is performing properly. So this website will tell you very detailed information about your connection. So yes, you can go to your provider and say, look, my connection is S. I have proof. Please fix it. Also, keep in mind that your connection can be also limited by your box modem or router that you got from, from your internet provider. There are a lot of routers out there like for, for gaming, for networking, for blah, blah, blah. Asus likes to say gaming router, company router, super security, easy game, no lag. But there are good routers with, with particular functionalities that you probably don't even know about. So next step. We go to this website called uh, DSL Report. DSL Reports. I'm going to link it in the description. And we go to the kind of connection that we have. So we have a gigabyte fiber, Q uh, if you do, cable, DSL, satellite, uh, 4G, public Wi Fi, and a place very detailed. And let's do a proper testing. In this case, I have a cable, the worst fucking possible connection. Thank you, East Germany. So we click on cable and we test. You can see how unstable it is compared to the download speed. Look at this. Now, the test is complete and you can read this. Overall, A. Buffer bloat, B. Quality, A. So, for the buffer bloat, uh, you probably need a new router. There's no way to fix uh, the buffer bloat uh, without buying a, a better router. If your resources are like that, you are in a good place. But the optimal situation will be with you having triple A, right? So in this case, I'm just demonstrating how my connection is garbage. So now I can blame the connection for sucking at, you know, video game, I guess. That's how it works. I think it works like that. And that was it. This, the steps are very simple. You don't have to be a genius to do this kind of stuff. Just follow along and good luck. I hope this video will help you. And I will see you guys every day on Twitch at the link in the description. And I will see you guys in the next video. There's another guide right here for like playing video games online. No. Should be right here. Somewhere.